What's going on everybody? Jim Mint here back with another Omnibus haul. Huge shout out to Marvel Comics for sending some early edition Omnibus trade paperbacks and this Treasury edition. And a huge shout out to JP over at Organic Price Books for sending through the rest. They've been sponsoring the channel for some time now and they've also joined up on Whatnot. They have a live show tomorrow, Sunday, January 16th, starting at 3 p.m. Eastern. And he's got a slew of dope Omnis that are going to go up for auction. That's where I get all my inventory from, so make sure to check him out on Whatnot if you're on there. And if you haven't, use the link in the description, download it, follow me, follow Organic Price Books, and it will give you a $10 credit towards your first purchase. With that out the way, let's jump into this Deadpool Black, White, and Red Oversized Treasury Edition. All right, guys, let's start off with the Treasury Edition for Deadpool Black, White, and Blood. I wasn't able to find like the page count or the release date on this. It does have a $30 retail price here and collects black, white, and blood issues one through four. If you guys are familiar with the channel, you've seen me cover a lot of these types of treasury editions. They're kind of like trade paperbacks, but they're a little bit more reinforced and they're much taller than a, a typical trade paperback as well, as you can see. Um, but these little mini series have been popping up throughout Marvel, DC, Dynamite. Uh, pretty much every publisher has been doing uh, a black, white, and red, or black, white, and gold, where it's black and white except for like one color to accentuate the story. I feel like most of the time it's been red for blood. Like there's a Carnage one, uh, there was a Red Sonia one, a Harley Quinn one. Uh, I don't think I've read any of these. What they are is each issue is uh, three short stories from all different creators. Let me see who's working on this book here. You have, yeah, you have people like Tom Taylor with Phil Noto. You have Pete Woods with David and Maria Lapham, Carla Pacheco with uh, Leonard Kirk, Stan Sakai did one with Rachel Rosenberg. That's pretty interesting. This kind of looks like the Stan Sakai stuff. So, I, I mean, if you're collecting these, uh, nice oversized format. There's a couple of them out already, so you could have a nice little collection. There's a Wolverine one. So, uh, this one, I don't know, check for it. I can't really find uh, any info on when it releases. Nice variant gallery in the back. Ryan Stegman cover here. Here's a Stan Sakai cover. That looks cool. Salvador La Roca. All right, now let's go ahead and get through all of these trade paperbacks, and then we'll move on to the Omnis. All right, guys, let's look at a couple of trades here. So we have Wolverine by Claremont and Miller. This is a deluxe edition trade paperback that releases on January 26th. It has a cover price of $19.99 and 160 uh, pages. So you're getting the one through four Frank Miller miniseries, but it also includes Uncanny X-Men 172 and 173. So kind of tying it in there with what's going on in the X-Men run. So, I mean, obviously this has been printed in many different formats, uh, in omnibus and hardcovers and trade paperbacks in the past. So basically, if you're looking for the Frank uh, Miller Wolverine miniseries and you just want to read that, this could be an affordable option for you guys a trade paperback that you guys can just pick up from wherever you buy books. So um, content uh, material that we've seen plenty of times, just kind of wanted to highlight that this is coming out as well. Next up for the trades, we have Moon Knight. This is the ongoing Moon Knight series by McKay, Capuccio, and Rosenberg. It's the Midnight Mission. This comes out on February 9th. Has 144 pages with an $18 cover price. Here we have the spine in the back here yeah so it has the first six issues it's been a great series so far if you guys watch my uh weekly comic book reviews you know i've been reading this ongoing and uh it's been really good man and you know moon knight's coming out it's a great way to kind of brush up on the character it feels gritty it's got like its own kind of lore to it i don't know i really dig it you have like supernatural villains a lot of one and done issues i felt like in this six issue arc although there is an overall overarching story here uh, but you got Moon Knight he's got this mission he's got these two kind of outfits he's rocking with uh, his suit while he's running the mission and then the Moon Knight costume while he's out being Moon Knight and uh, you have you know uh, some other uh, fists of the Khonshu that show up here as you can see in these pages but great series so far if you guys have been missing the single issues I highly recommend to pick up the trade looks like it does highlight some variants in the back here as well 
So a nice bang for your buck. There's actually a couple of trade paperbacks that are coming out um, that I've been reading the single issues on. This comes out February 9th. Kang the Conqueror, Only Myself Left to Conquer. This is a five-issue miniseries with 120 pages, $16 cover price. Kind of same vibes as Moon Knight as far as Kang is going to be supposedly the big bad in the MCU. So they cr- <laughs> they cranked out a miniseries here. Uh, who wrote this? Jackson Lansing and Colin Kelly, Carlos Magno. I really dug this series, man. It was kind of a, a deep, touching story, a time loop scenario as only you know you get with Kang stories. But um, just to kind of give you the gist of it, basically Kang Prime goes into the past to tap young Kang to warn him not to fall in love because that'll ruin everything and all his aspirations. Uh, and that doesn't really go so well for him. So I thought it was a cool little series. I mean, I'm not like a Kang aficionado or anything, but I thought it was touching. It had emotion to it. It was interesting. Uh, And yeah, I'm digging it. All right, another trade, but this is a a complete collection. This is Moon Knight by Bendis and Maleev. This one comes out on February 2nd, 288 pages, $30 cover price. I read this uh, as an oversized hardcover. I guess they are reprinting it. It's a 12-issue series that came out in 2011. Uh, because of Moon Knight, you know, he's so hot right now, his TV show's coming out, so Marvel being smart, capitalizing off of that exposure, you know, p- uh, printing uh, the Moon Knight material again. I remember enjoying it, but again, I wasn't like a huge Moon Knight fan. I know a lot of common criticisms where Bendis didn't really understand the character, and he just wrote him however he thought Moon Knight should be. So, I mean, I, I remember reading it, I enjoyed it, it played a lot more like with like... Uh, I think he felt like superheroes were talking to him in his head or something like that. So really playing with his kind of like schizophrenia and just overall unwell mental health. I don't know. Um, Yeah, give it a shot, man. If you're interested in Moon Knight, I, I, I enjoyed it, man. I didn't dislike it. So it's coming out, man. Complete collection and a trade. All right, guys. The last of the trade paperbacks is the Darkhold trade paperback. Comes out on February 16th. This one has a 176 page count, $20 cover price. Uh, again, this was a recent ongoing that just wrapped up. It had a Alpha and Omega, and then it had one shots. You had a Blade, Wasp, Iron Man, Black Bolt, Spider Man, and that was it. So I really dug the one shots. They were kind of like horror inspired kind of one-offs, I guess you would say, that, that tied into this dark hole thing. Basically, Alpha and Omega is, uh, the book is out, Doom tries to get a hold of the book, uh, our heroes read from it, you're not supposed to read from it, and it gives them these kind of like experiences and these horror scenarios. I don't know how you want to explain it, but it was, it was awesome, man. I really dug the one-shots. The kind of overarching thing was whatever. The Alpha and Omega was not that big of a deal for me, but seriously, I think it was worth it for those one-shots, man. If you like horror-inspired stuff, uh, kind of what-ifs, I guess, is, is what it was really like. So uh, I would say, you know, check it out if that's the case, if you want to grab the trade. All right, all right, guys. On to the first omnibus of the day, the What If by Marvel Comics Volume 2. Let's go. All right, here we are on to the Omnis, the What If Original Marvel Series Volume 2. So here's the thing. Uh, The DM variant, as you see right here, comes out on February 22nd. There's also a DM variant that comes out on February 22nd. But it looks like the Wolverine uh, vs. Hulk variant comes out January 19th. Uh, Not the variant, the regular cover. So you can get the regular cover sooner. It's got 1,024 pages, a $125 cover price, and it collects What If 23 uh, through 47. So here's the spine right here, Uatu on the spine. And then here's the back. You have all of the uh, contents here. So this is the regular cover right here, What If Wolverine Killed the Hulk. So that comes out a little bit earlier if you guys want to grab that first. I think that's probably the best cover too. Here we have the inside of the dust jacket. You have a little forward here by Uatu. You have a uh, biography on all the creators here. And if you weren't able to get that regular cover, that's the uh, art on the hardcover itself. So that's pretty cool. You have the graphics on the spine. And then one of the DM covers on the back here as well. So, so cool to see them do this. These were one of the Omnis back in the day when I would make video lists on like, what are my you know, most wanted Omnibus? What if was on there? I loved the kind of little one shots one and done you could just jump in there and read whatever you like uh and it was just kind of always like a twisted negative take 
on a, a popular story from comics, right? So Wolverine and Hulk battled in Hulk 180 through 182. Well, in the what if, he kills him. So that's kind of what it is. Just little non-canon one-shots. I mean, some things would eventually become canon with like Jane Foster's Thor, like we saw in Volume 1 here. But I love the era. I love the kind of little twist on the stories that we know and love. And I just think it's classic material that would be a pain to hunt down and, and, and try to collect in single issues, to be honest. So Volume 2 is out. Here's a, one of the DM covers as well, right? So uh, what if Dazzler became the Herald of Galactus? This was a twofer. What if Iron Man was uh, trapped in time during the time of King Arthur? What if Iron Man was fat instead of an alcoholic? What if the Fantastic Four hadn't got superpowers? Nice homage cover here. Here goes some nice Namor stuff. So, yeah, one of those omnis, like I said, that you could just jump in, pick out a story that you want to read. You don't have to start from the beginning, uh, and you can just uh, dive into it. Nice Bilson Kedwich, uh What If 47 variant. That's dope. The best of What If. That's cool. Trade paperback from the 90s. Recoloring here. That's cool. Next up, we have maybe the thinnest omnibus of all time, the Howard the Duck by Chip Zdarsky. Let's take a look at it. All right, next up, we have Howard the Duck by Chip Zdarsky and Joe Quinones. What's funny is when I got this in the mail from Marvel, again, shout out to Marvel, I thought this was an oversized hardcover, but it's actually an omnibus. 424 pages, $60 only, but it gets the omnibus tag here and everything. And this collects uh, Howard the Duck, issues one through five, that was from 2015. That was the first volume. Uh, then in that same year, they re-volumed it. It has issues 1 through 11, Unbeatable, Squirrel Girl, issue 6, and material from War of the Realms, War Scrolls, number 1. Here we have the inside of the dust jacket. As always, a biography on the creators, a little bit about Howard the Duck here. And as with all modern Marvel omnibus, you have a beautiful wraparound cover on the actual hardcover itself. So I have never read this material. I remember seeing it in comic shops. I was I was frequent in comic shops when this was coming out 2015. A little bit newer back into reading. Uh, I wasn't really a big Howard the Duck guy. Uh, but I love Chip Zdarsky, man. He's got to be like one of my favorite writers out right now. So this is tempting to kind of jump in here and uh, read it. It's a quick read. Like I said, it's only, what, 400 and some pages here. So maybe I'll breeze through this one, give it a quick read and review, as I have been trying to review more Omnis lately. Uh, you know, it looks like modern Marvel stuff. It looks like it's not too serious. But with the writing, I'm sure is witty, and I'm sure it's funny. So uh, it's something I'm definitely interested in. And look at this, man. Most of this book is variant covers. Uh, at least they gave it the $60 cover price. I think that's got to be like the most affordable Marvel omnibus ever. I think 75 was the lowest I've ever seen before that, but there you go. All right, on to some Mutant Mayhem. We have the New Mutants Volume 2, Big Boy Book. Let's go. All right, guys, on to a Big Boy, the New Mutants Omnibus Volume 2. So this is actually the DM variant, courtesy of Art Adams. And you have the regular cover here by Barry Windsor Smith. So this has 1,240 pages, $125 cover price with a release date of February 16th. Here's the spine here. Great looking spine. They really went all out with the uh, art direction on the New Mutants Omnibus. I noticed that with Volume 1. Volume 2 continues on that tradition. And it collects New Mutants 35 through 54. You got Special Edition 1, Annuals 2 and 3, X-Men Annuals 9 and 10, Power Pack 20 and 33, Fallen Angels 1 through 8, Firestar 1 through 4, New Mutants War Children, and some material from Web of Spider-Man Annual 2. You got all the covers on the back here. And this is actually the cover right here for the uh, regular edition, which is a wraparound cover. All right, inside of the dust jacket, as always, talking about the creators, Chris Claremont, Joe Duffy, Art Adams, uh, and then talking about where the new mutants are here, Magneto leading the team. We have some beautiful art on the hardcover itself. Like I said, that wraparound cover, which is the regular cover. They, they probably should have kept it wrapping around, but what are you going to do? So I guess like we're like halfway through, right? If they're going to get to issue 100, it looks like they're going to have to crank out four volumes, especially, you know, with all the uh, bonus material that they're throwing into these books here. Table of contents, and then boom, that wraparound cover, like I mentioned, for the special edition. So I did a, a New Mutants read-through when I was getting back into comics. Uh, I was reading books online, and I think I read the whole thing, man. I mean, I definitely... Uh, 
I definitely like the X-Men, and the New Mutants were an offshoot of that. There were some things I liked. There's some things I didn't like about it. Um, I could never get into Reigns, can I? I cannot do that. Like, I, I don't know how to say it in my head with her accent. <laughs> but, um, you know, interesting stuff, interesting times. I just am super happy that uh, Marvel is reprinting all, like, the mutant spinoffs, man, from Excalibur to X-Factor to New Mutants. And part of the whole reason why I love the Omnibus game, because at the end of the day... We're going to be able to have all of this content collected in a hardcover on the shelf. You can read it anytime you want. I love the uh, the art in this era. I mean, you have that Copper Age stuff. I should do a reread through uh, and do some reviews on these books as well because I don't really remember much of this stuff from reading it years ago. This one was more of a surprise from Organic Price Books, man. Uh, I'll talk more about it on the overhead, but we have the Lock and Key non-omnibus, the compendium hardcover that is basically an omnibus. All right, guys, JP from Organic Price Books, he sent me this lock and key, key house compendium. Um, I'm not really sure when this came out. I don't have much information on it. I used to have the lock and key master lock editions, which were like deluxe editions. This one looks more like an omnibus format. It looks like it has a cover price of $125. And let's see what it collects. It doesn't look like it says it on the back here. That's the first time I think I've seen an all black dust jacket like this. <laughs> Well, this is uh, published by IDW, so it's a little bit different. They're calling it a compendium, but come on, man. It's the same size as an omnibus. I really dug Lock and Key, man. I loved reading it. I thought it was super fresh. Um, I liked season one of the show, but I started to watch season two with Fee, and I just couldn't get into it, man. It was definitely very kiddie feeling. I, I don't know. I didn't like it. So what does this collect? It collects Lock and Key, Welcome to Lovecraft, issues one through six, Head Games Issues 1 through 6, um, Crown of Shadows 1 through 6, Keys to the Kingdom 1 through 6, Clockworks 1 through 6, Omega 1 through 5, and Alpha 1 and 2. We've got a forward here by Joe Hill. You guys may know him. He's the son of Stephen King. He does Hill House Comics. I think this was like the first time I heard of Joe Hill was Lock and Key. I liked the intrigue, man. The fact that the Hill House has all these keys and that they have all these magical aspects some can unlock the your head and you could put information in take it out some can turn you into a ghost leaves you dead at the door but you could fly around so uh yeah shout out to jp for sending this through i did sell those deluxe editions but being that this is more on the omnibus format i might keep this one in the collection uh but i did read it i did like the first season of the show second season not so much uh, the art style has a lighter feel to it, but it's a little bit more detailed than, say, that Batgirl stuff that we were just uh, looking at here. I recommend the read. I thought it was better than the book. It felt more comic-y. It didn't feel like teeny bopper, like how the show started to become. So, uh, yeah, man, be on the lookout for it. I, I can't find uh, the release date on this or anything, so maybe it's been out for a while. Another thin omni, this time from DC Comics. We have the Batgirl of Burnside Omnibus, the second half of the new 52 run. All right, guys, here we have the Batgirl of Burnside Omnibus by Cameron Stewart, Brendan Fletcher, and Babs Tarr. This came out last week or so. $100 cover price with 552 pages. And it collects Batgirl 35 through 52, Batgirl Annual 3, DC Sneak Peek, Batgirl 1, Batgirl Endgame 1, and a story from Secret Origins Issue 10. Nothing going on on the inside of the dust jacket here, just some Halloween-themed bats. Uh, but we do have a wraparound cover here. Now, it starts on issue 35 because this is the new 52 run that picks up after Gail Simone's run, uh, which there already is an omnibus of. So pretty cool that they uh, are continuing that, and they are cranking out so many new 52 omnibus. It's something we used to complain about back in the day, and now we're getting it all. This is <laughs> the only thing I really remember from this run uh, is the selfie um, variants. I haven't read this material uh, I'm just a sucker to collect anything from the big two here, you know, so um, I don't know you guys are gonna have to let me know about this man. You know, is this um, Is this good material? Is it worth the read? Obviously, I would probably want to read the Gail Simone stuff first before I jumped into this but uh, I Enjoy Batgirl in modern DC comics her stuff has Oracle and detective and Batman So I don't know I maybe I should go back and, and look into this But I have not read this material yet. So I can't really speak on it the art looks kind of light and playful. You know, it looks, um, it doesn't really look like it's up my alley, but you know, you never know. The looks could be deceiving. Uh, variant gallery in the back.
They were doing a lot of stuff with the selfies, man. This was kind of like what, uh, 2015 or 16 or so. Prince Purple Rain homage. I remember all the variants from this era too, because like I said, this is when I was going into comic shops, picking up books, uh, and getting back into reading. Last two from DC are some big boys and some bangers. We have the conclusion of the Green Arrow Longbow Hunter Saga run. All right, guys, we got one of the big boys here, the Green Arrow, the Longbow Hunter Saga Omnibus Volume 2 by Mike Grell here, published under DC's Black Label imprint, so you know you're getting something a little bit more mature here. 1,480 pages, $150, collects the second half of this run, issues 51 through 80. You have Green Arrow, the Wonder Year 1 through 4, and never before collected, Shadow, Song of the Dragon issues 1 through 4. Also has Brave and the Bold 1 through 5, Green Arrow Annual 4, uh, 6, and it has more material as well. Here's the inside of the dust jacket here. Not much going on, just a little quote here, some uh, biography here on Mike Grell, uh, who wrote and illustrated this series. Here we have the graphics on the hardcover. Looks like it kind of wraps around for a nice little design. Black Canary on the back. I have heard nothing but wonderful things about this. Um, Robbie, uh, Rock and Robbie, was... Uh, was was really bigging this up for me to read it. I haven't read this material yet. Uh, now that both volumes are out, I really need to get on it. Got a forward here by Dan Jurgens, and then boom, we're on to the first issue here. So I love the artwork. It really gives me like well, it's DC Black Label, so I'm assuming this was published under Vertigo, and it has that same type of vibe. It has like the Sandman type of vibe to it, that more mature, copper age, pre digital coloring kind of vibe to it. And uh, I'm assuming it has more of a serious tone, being that it was published under that imprint. So I really want to jump into it, man. I feel uh, it's a shame I haven't read it yet. I'm not able to really speak on the story, but I can tell you right now, I love the art and I've heard great things about this run. So something that I'm really looking forward to reading. Big Boy Omni. It lays nice and flat, though, even in the middle here. You don't really have much gutter loss. So really well done on this omnibus. You got some variant covers and some sketches in the back here. So you get some nice bonus material. And lastly, everybody, one that I'm really looking forward to, the Batman No Man's Land Omnibus Volume 1. All right, guys, and here we are, the last book of the haul, Batman No Man's Land Omnibus Volume 1. We've got the front cover, we've got the spine, and we have the prequel already, the Road to No Man's Land Omnibus. This one just came out. It has a $125 cover price, 1,120 pages, and it collects No Man's Land number one, you have Shadow of the Bat 83 through 88, Batman 563 to 568, Detective Comics 730 through 735, Azrael Agent of the Bat 51 through 57, Legends of the Dark Knight 116 through 121, The Batman Chronicles 16 and 17, Young Justice in No Man's Land 1, Robin 67, Nightwing 35 through 37, and Catwoman 72 through 74. The inside of the dust jacket, pretty basic. You got a quote from the Oracle and the Penguin. And you have a pretty subtle design on the hardcover itself here. Not much going on here. And this is why I love Omnis, man. You heard all those different issues it collects, like to track all that down and to map it out. Uh, that's why I'm just really a big fan of this uh, format. All right, so what do we have here? Dale e uh, Eaglesham and Sean Parsons are the collection cover artists. Here's the table of contents here. We've got some Alex Ross uh, on the cover here as well. That's awesome. So, you know, now that the No Man's Land Omnibus is out, I would really love to do a, a, a read through and review the Road to No Man's Land, then do the same with this. And it looks like a volume two will be coming out. I've never read this material. Uh, as a kid during this era, I was strictly Marvel Comics, man. If it wasn't Spider-Man or X-Men, it really didn't get my attention. Especially because being young, it was hard to follow all those different titles to understand everything that tied in, right? Like, I wouldn't know to get Shadow of the Bad and uh, Agent of the Bad and Young Justice and all this kind of stuff. But I love the era. I mean, you're looking at what? It's got to be... Um, mid 90s stuff yeah maybe even late 90s stuff but i hear good things about it you know it's uh definitely my vibe my era and uh, i'm interested to see what this huge event was all about i know it has to do with like an earthquake i'm assuming it made it something where uh some type of lawless gotham city that batman had to set back right but you know we'll have to read and review to find out
So a pretty decent haul. We had some pre-release stuff. We had some stuff I've read, some stuff that I haven't read, but I'm looking forward to. Uh, let me know what you think about the haul and what books are you looking to pick up in the comments down below. Again, big shout out to Marvel Comics. Big shout out to Organic Price Books. And uh, make sure to go check them out on their Whatnot sale tomorrow. You might get a great deal on some hardcovers. Stay minty fresh, y'all. Peace.